about the different types of texts that we can find in, in newspapers. We can divide them into three groups. On the first group, we have the information text. Here we have the news. These are the classical piece of uh, news. They are composed of a headline, a subtitle, and the body of the text. Okay? Uh, in the body of the text, we have to give answer to the five W's, what, who, when, where, and why, and also how. And we also need to find different sources of information. This is very important in order to, in order to check the information, if the information is, is true. We have to tell both versions, always tell both versions. Um, we also have the journalist report. They are more extent. These are examples. They also have the, the headline, which is uh, it's usually more literature, more literature. More literary? Literary, sorry. The introduction and the body of the text. They include information in depth about a topic. They also have to include uh, different sources of information from people, from books, from the internet. And they usually have infographics and uh, all these little texts to make them easier to read. Also an example. So as you can see, they use different types of, uh, of formats. Layout. 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 To make it more appealing to the reader. Okay. And last, we have the, the interviews. And I think we all, we all know what this is about. They can be, they can be transcripted literally transcripted or they can be shown as, uh, as a report too. Then we have the, the opinion, the second group. And here we have the editorials. I haven't found any example, but they are the, the opinion of the newspaper. As it is the opinion of the newspaper, they are not signed. They, all, they only have the title, the, the headline, and the body of the text. And they are usually about topics of general interest, something usually important for the, for the population, for the readers. And here we also have the opinion columns. They also include the headline and the body of the text. They are always signed and they show the opinion of the journalist about a topic. They are, um, newspapers usually have fixed columnists and they are the ones who give prestige to the newspaper. I think you have heard about the columnist who writes in a certain newspaper and there are people who buy his newspaper because they want to read the columnist. Um, we also have the hybrids. As the word says, they are a mixture between information and opinion, and here we can find mostly two different types of, te of text. The features, I don't, I don't know if this is right. It is. Okay. They are mostly sports features, okay? They show, uh, well, the headlines are taught in the body of the text, they show the, the opinion of the, of the journalist about the event, but they also need to include the facts of the, of the actual event. Okay, and they also have this uh, fact sheet, okay, where we have the, the players, goals, the referees. And last, we have the, the reviews, which I think is the, the next Composition assignment. <laughs> <laughs> the reviews, they also include the headline and the body of the text. And as Michelle said last week, they need to have both parts 
a descriptive part with the, with the facts of the, of the book, of the film, or whatever it is, and the opinion. Um, it is very important whether we write information, opinion, or hybrid, especially when we write information in hybrid, it is very important to keep in mind what is our target, to what, uh, <coughs> what our target is. <laughs> okay, uh, we need to make clear if the people uh, know about the topic or not, especially when we write reports, because we need to, to make things clear, to explain things so that the reader knows what, what it's all about and they can understand what we're talking about. <coughs> this is very important and also to use a, a language that they can understand, not to be uh, vulgar, but to use a language that they can understand or if we use something very technique to explain it. Oh, you mean not to use slang? or very informal language, yes. but understandable yes. language. Um, I think that's it. Can we make questions? Yes. <laughs> okay, because I have a question. So, when, when they ask people to write an article, the other day when I told you here we have to review different types of articles for our writing assignments, our academic writing assignments. Uh, what would you explain about uh, a writing assignment, an academic writing assignment, which is write an article? If we exclude the news uh, articles, because these ones have the inverted pyramid, and that's not uh, what we ask students to write because that's very professional. You know what I mean? You, you need to be a journalist to be good at that kind of structure. So we never ask uh, students, when we ask them to write an article, we never ask them to write uh, an article from the kind of inverted pyramid uh, structure, that kind of thing. But we, we see that in textbooks we find articles that, have, that are informative and they have little headlines and they are very practical. And then in, at the advanced levels we usually ask people to write articles about um, controversial issues uh, for and against articles or what, what we are calling here essays, but in the article format. How would you write an article, you know, on a controversial issue, or do you have... I would expose... Uh, present? Pro, present pro and against ar ar arguments, and then give my personal opinion. But I think you always have to give the complete information to the reader. Then you can have your opinion, you can express it. But I think it's important for the reader to know, as I said, both versions. To always have the different versions of the, of the topic. Or the different points of view. Excellent. Okay. So how do you start an article on, on a controversial topic? What's the beginning like? to present the topic. Okay, exactly, right. And to explain it if it's something that uh, most people don't know about. <coughs> okay. And then how can you end an article? With a conclusion. Always with a conclusion. Always. When we are speaking about articles, where we are dealing with mm -hmm. a controversial topic, analysis articles, we always need a conclusion, right? Mm -hmm. Some kind of conclusion. Not just an ending. No, I mean to summarize a bit uh, what you explained and to give your opinion or what <coughs> you would do. Okay. But not very personal. We don't have to get very personal. Okay. That's important, right? Not super personal, right? Okay. <laughs> Always keep a distance, right? 
Okay, I'm not going to shoot, but do you have any questions for <laughs> Rocio? Well, I also have these uh, two papers that I'm going to send Michelle, so that you can see it, because this is very interesting to, for writing uh, reviews. Okay, documentary reviews and film and books reviews. They tell you what you have to include and they give you useful expressions. Mm Thank you.